Okay, well, welcome to this webinar from Business SA. Uh, my name is Nigel McBride. I'm the CEO of Business SA. Look, it's really important for us to get directly through to our members on key issues. We're, we're just so aware of the fact that media grabs can be really misleading and Twitter battles can be very unconstructive and unfortunate. What we care about is what our members understand in terms of our policy position and our lobbying position for you. Now, obviously, the broader business community is going to get value out of this as well, but it's about our members. We care about our members' concerns and opinions. We will never meet the opinions and concerns of either side of the political spectrum. We'll never go hard enough on, on a Labor government for the Liberal Party. We'll never go hard enough on the federal Liberal government or coalition government for the Labor Party. But that's not our job. Our job on your behalf is to dig through all of the political rhetoric and get the very best deal that we can get for our members and for this business community in, let's be frank, a really tough environment post the federal budget uh, when uh, governments right around the country are complaining about revenue hits. So I just want to just be incredibly candid with our members about where we find ourselves. The first thing is the context of the state budget. Look, there is a reality check in here. Um, this could have been a shocker. Uh, as I said, every state government and all the rest of them are liberal are at odds with the federal coalition on the impact of the federal budget. Now, we went out and said, look, we understand the need to make tough decisions to get costs down at a federal level. We know that they want to find revenue to get us back into surplus. We understand that, but the truth is the federal budget um, raises some concerns for the business community. In this state, we're going to have cash taken out of the economy. We're going to have increased costs like the excise on petrol. We're going to have people who've got discretionary income affected with the, the debt levy, et cetera, et cetera. So we tried to play a straight bat with that and said, look, we understand there needs to be some hard decisions. We know that the Commonwealth public sector costs need to come down. We understand there's a, 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 a real aim to get um, the Commonwealth budget back into surplus, but there are impacts into our South Australian business community, into business confidence, into consumer confidence, which concern us. Now, uh, let's go back to the state budget. So the South Australian Labor minority government got back in in circumstances where they clearly believed that we as the South Australian business community had written them off. As business SA, we went in hard on both parties before the last election with our 75 recommendations to turn the state around. Now, we haven't moved a millimetre from those recommendations, and I'll talk about them during this broadcast. The truth is, given the federal budget given that every state was playing the blame game, given the Labor minority government's position with business in this community, there was every chance that this was going to be a horror budget for our members and for the broader business and employer community. So I met the Treasurer and I, I met him because, frankly, he knows exactly what our position is. The cost of doing business in South Australia are already too high. We've been saying that. I've been in this role for two years. I've been saying it pretty much every week for two years. The burden on South Australian business is too high when you take the combination of state taxes, levies like work cover, and utility costs, some of the highest in the country. We are uncompetitive as a state. Now, some of our state taxes are better than others, but if you take the whole lot together as a package, it is still a position that we can't accept. Now. It's really interesting that Tom Kinsentonis, the Treasurer, admitted at the post-budget session at the Advertiser, and I was speaking on a panel there, commenting on the budget, it would have been much easier for him to hit our members in the business sector rather than his constituents. Uh, it would have been much easier for him to load up payroll tax and stamp duty rather than go after mum and dads in South Australia with the emergency services levy. But he also admitted something that's really important, and he's done it to me privately, he's now admitted publicly. He's accepted that for this state to go forward, for sustainable job creation 
and the economic turnaround that must come, it's got to come from the private sector, not the public sector. We are not going to have a public sector-led recovery. We're going to have a business-led recovery in this state, and that's what we all need to focus on in the next two to three years. So in that context, when we came to what could have been a horror budget, there is some good news. Now, it's not wonderful news, it's not crack the champagne, but I tell you what, we've managed to make sure that this government holds the line on no new significant direct tax imposts. Now, in the context of what I've just talked about, you know, that isn't where we want to go in the future, but what a terrible burden to add to the already high tax costs by our members. We wanted to at least achieve a line in the sand on that. Now, we've been consistent from day one that we believe the car park tax is not constructive. It's not what we want to see happen. We've joined with our colleague industry associations, with the local government association, with the Adelaide City Council, the Rundle Mall Authority, and said, it's, even if there was a congestion tax down the track, this is not the right time. And we've been consistent with that. It's a, it's a tax on, a, on the vibrancy of our city, on retail at a very bad time, and we've opposed it. But, you know, no new significant direct taxes. The remaining concessions in payroll tax relief and stamp duty concessions would have been very easy for uh, the Treasurer to take those away. Low-hanging fruit. He didn't do it, and we think this is the beginning of a constructive outcome, and as I've said here, in very tough circumstances. And we don't regard this as the end of the process. We regard this as the beginning of a process of reform that leads us through to a surplus. Why is the surplus in the state budget important? Why is it important that um, Coots and Tonus has committed to that surplus? Because without that surplus, we're simply not going to have any relief in state taxes at all. And indeed, our position is very, very clear. We will continue with these economically choking taxes at a state level in payroll tax, stamp duty, land tax, until we can get fundamental reform at a state and federal level through the GST so these taxes can be done away with completely. Our mission is not simply to reform state taxation. Our mission is to get rid of it completely and, and to, to really allow the economy in our state to grow. Okay, there's some other outcomes that are useful. $60 million um, allocated to revive the state uh, economy post Holden. Now, this is a major uh, cliff that we're facing in terms of business confidence, consumer confidence. Uh, we've already got seriously high unemployment, and this is going to drive it even higher. Uh, and that's why the next point is really important as well. We, we need to see more uh, vocational education and training uh, going to our young people. We've got record high youth unemployment. We faced that in the last few months. We need to fix that. We need to get these kids trained. We need to get. Um, we need to remember that we, as the economy turns around, we're going to need apprentices. We're going to need skills. Look, you know, anybody who's listened to me for the last two years would know that we've argued strenuously to get the public sector cost down. We're not anti-public sector. We understand there needs to be frontline services, but the truth is we've got more public servants as a pro rata of our working population than any other mainland state. We've been absolutely consistent that we've got to rationalise the size and cost of state government, otherwise there is no way forward to give the relief that business needs in terms of tax. Um, we want to also emphasise the things that won't cost this government a dollar in revenue, and we put these very strongly to the government. These won't cost you um, revenue dollars, but they will save the business community. One of them is a comprehensive reform of work cover, not just um, you know fiddling around the edges, a fundamental reform of, of a piece of legislation that even the Attorney General says, John Rao, is buggered. Well, we all agree it's been buggered for a long time. Let's get on with it. And we genuinely believe that this could deliver a savings of $180 million a year. That's the sort of breakthrough, that's the sort of game changer employers in this state need and deserve. There's some other things that we believe are useful, the $1.3 billion on road projects over four years, including that really important north-south corridor and, of course, the Oban, uh, $9 million over three years to establish green industries. Uh, we actually support the deferral on royalties uh, for developing unconventional gas. Uh, this 
uh, state needs game changers like um, unconventional gas. We've got an extraordinary amount of it up in the Cooper uh, where agriculture won't be affected. We understand that there needs to be a balance between agricultural land um, and, you know, it's really important that we actually have the balance between a really important agribusiness and agricultural sector, but also developing unconventional gas. Now, there's going to be some winners and losers in there in terms of each project, but let's at least explore that and let's at least uh, attract the investment. Uh, we're delighted that the funding will continue for the industry participation advocate. Now, this is a role we actively lobbied for. We, we got it created, then we got it empowered, we got it teeth, we got it resources. Why? Because this state spends, this state government spends $3.8 billion a year on goods and services. We want more and more of that $3.8 billion spent on South Australian businesses to create South Australian jobs. And we, don't, we want it not just to go to big business in South Australia, but we want to make sure there's a way that small to medium-sized enterprises, who are the backbone of the state, can participate. And we'll continue to hold government accountable to see actual outcomes, not just theories. Of course, there were going to be um, some seriously bad news. Um, the, you know, the emergency services levy will clearly impact on business. It'll clearly impact on residential homes. Um, the Treasurer tells me that's the trade-off or part of the trade-off uh, of not moving payroll tax up or stamp duty or land tax. Uh, it's harder for him to put that on his residential constituents than on business, coming from a Labor background. He's made that decision so that he can hold the line on business taxes. Um, finally, we're getting some attention into the regions. I go out to the regions probably every five weeks. I meet with regional business all the time. And it's true that regional business has felt an enormous disconnect with a metro-focused Labor government. And so we're obviously delighted on behalf of our members in the regions that there's some attention. So we've got these programs you can see on the screen now. Really, really important because we believe that premium food and beverage manufacturing is a massive part of the economic turnaround we want to see getting into these new markets in Southeast Asia, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia with high quality value added premium food and beverage and that's going to be a key driver of our economy going forward. And it's good to see there is now, um, by whatever catalyst, some well overdue focus on the regions. So where to from here? You know, we, we as uh, the peak business organisation in the state don't choose the governments that come. We didn't choose the federal government. We didn't choose the state government. We've got, an, we've got a, a choice. Do we engage on your behalf? to try and get the very best deal we can in pretty tough circumstances, or do we just disengage and go, it's all too hard, all we're going to do is criticise from a distance, um, and we're going to stand back and shoot grenades? Well, frankly, we've got to engage on your behalf to get the best deal we can get for you as our members, and we're going to engage not only with the, with the state government, but also the state opposition. We want a constructive, of course we want a constructive um, conversation with the state opposition. Um, they care about the state just as the government does. We want a constructive relationship, of course, with the federal government and the federal opposition. We want a constructive conversation with the union movement because we would have thought that common ground in this state was let's get more jobs created and uh, you know, very hard to get union dues from people who aren't working. We've got a lot of common ground. We're a small state, and with that smallness comes a hell of a lot of challenges. But I can tell you, one of the things we can do as a small state is start to actually focus on the positives, focus on turning exports around, focus on job creation for young people and training, and obviously work to get where we need to go. Now, we haven't moved a millimetre from the charter we put to both uh, parties uh, only a few months ago, and we pursued it hard in the media. We pursued it hard with the pre-election debate that I chaired. And one of the reasons why the media is saying, oh, there was a very chilly relationship between Business SA and the Labor government pre the last election is because we prosecuted this policy agenda on your behalf as hard as we possibly could, could, could to really bring the um, both sides of politics to the table. It wasn't to just to bring the government to the table, it was to bring the opposition to the table should they win government. 
part of that charter, as you know, is we want cuts to payroll uh, tax and land tax. We want the scales to be changed. We want red tape to be cut. We believe there's hundreds of millions of dollars worth of unnecessary red tape. One classic example is the ridiculous amounts of codes and regs around the work health and safety uh, legislation. We believe that's really uh, adding a huge amount of cost without adding any safety outcomes. We also want to see that um, SMEs, small to medium sized enterprises, get a shot at exports and we're working on really visionary collaborative schemes to get small companies into export markets like China. Uh, we're not just going to sit here and say, oh, woe is us, we can't get into export markets, we only do 4.5% of Australia's, percent of Australia's export, sorry, my apologies, exports, and we have more than 7% of the population. We're actually going to work on that and make sure that small to medium-sized enterprises have a pathway. And one of those pathways is us working with the new state brand uh, to get that um, imprimatur into places like China where that state brand is going to be very important. We've also led the charge um, without fear of favour on funding for infrastructure. We know that we're behind the eight ball on a lot of infrastructure and we've pushed, even though it was incredibly unpopular pre-election, both sides of politics, we said we must consider user pays models. Let's not be so intellectually arrogant that we're not prepared to consider what every other state and many jurisdictions around the world have had to consider. There must be a user pays system in there somewhere. Okay, also where to from here? Of course we'll continue to lobby, we'll continue to fight hard for you, we'll continue to do all we can in, let's face it, pretty difficult circumstances to actually do, um, create a better business environment. But on top of that, day to day, we've challenged ourselves as an organisation to do four things. We want to save our members money. We're going to do that by using buying power and by making your costs cheaper because we can do that on your behalf and bring you those savings. And we've got some exciting things coming up for our members that will save you serious money. We want to help you grow your business. We want to give you the tools, many of them will be online, to help you sustainably grow your business. Things like business diagnostic tools that we're working on right now. We want to make you money. We know that it's hard to find new opportunities in a contracting domestic market. We want to help you find those opportunities. Uh, whether it's business to business opportunities or otherwise, it's our job to work with you to get there. And finally, we take it seriously that we want to watch your back. By that I mean not only lobbying on your behalf with um, governments at federal and state level and local government, but also letting you know what's coming around the corner, uh, fighting on your behalf as legislation comes through. And you know, most people don't know, but what our policy and research team here does over a hundred formal submissions on complex issues on your behalf every year. That's two formal submissions a week on average on complex things that need to be researched to have a critical, credible position on behalf of our members. And that's before all of the informal submission, that's before all of the advocacy in the media. That's part of us watching your back. We know you're time poor, we know we want you to focus on your business, you need somebody to watch your back and that's what we're there to do. And finally, um, just one of the things that we want to do, we don't believe uh, changing this economy is down to government. If we wait for government to do it, then we've lost the leadership role that the business community should have. One of the things we're going to do shortly is to have a business sector summit on creating jobs. I've been approached by leading industry, captains of industry, by my colleague associations, and we're going to get together and we're going to come up with a plan to create jobs in the state and to stimulate the economy. Uh, we're happy to work with government, uh, we're happy to do what we can, but the truth is we need to make this happen for ourselves for our members, for the business community, and we have a thought leadership role in there that we want to really deliver some real changes. Can I just say, we've come to the end of the, uh, the slides, um, we really appreciate your support as members, we couldn't do it without you. We know it's confusing out there, we know that unfortunately we just can't come up with fantastic good news all the time. We're not going to kid you, this was always going to be a tough budget, but we fought very, very hard to get the best possible outcome we could. Now we're going to take criticism from both sides of politics. As I said, we'll never attack this Labor government hard enough for a Liberal Party opposition. We're never going to be, um, you know, close enough uh, to this government 
uh, for the Labor Party to feel like somehow we're absolutely connecting. That's because we walk a very fine line down the middle, which is to say, how do we engage with both sides of politics at state and federal level to get the very, very best outcome for our members? That's what we're here for. We do it unapologetically. We do it without fear of favour. And uh, I want you to know, on, on you know, as far as we're concerned, um, we, we do care about what politicians think about us, but nowhere near as much as we care about what our members think. Thank you for your time and attention.